think uh, I'm in Kai's camp. And uh, we're gonna kiss. <laughs> no, I'm not kissing. <laughs> My, my background, my background is I write backend servers, um, and I try not to touch the front end at all. But recently, my client says I want a web page, and uh oh, so I have I forced myself to learn HTML and some CSS and some stuff. Right? Um, so with that, I have to give you a little tutorial on where kind of thought. It's a tutorial how to use templates. Um, so with templates, uh, let me make it friendly for the people. This little dot here is very important. Um, and you can use it with strings. So the dot here represents the stuff you want to insert. So if I execute the template with world, it will say, hello world. Oh, OK. Do you do mushrooms? I do mushrooms. I do mushrooms. <laughs> So if I, ex I substitute world in here, it says hello world. Simple enough. That's a simple stuff. Okay. And like, uh, I've got two screens and I'm completely confused. Kill close. And um, okay, I'm going to expand the one. I'm going to sit down. Stuff properly. Click here, expand that properly. So, can the guys get back? Yep. Good. So, I can uh, I can put some funny structure in there. So, my template says pass, hello, salutation. There's this minus stuff over here which Kai didn't explain to that one. Uh, dot capital name, dot capital age, right? Um, and you must use capital letters when you use a struct. So I'm going to pass in a struct here. Salutation, starting with capital S. That's just the way Go works. Um, with a capital name and capital age. What do you think it will show? It will say, hello, Mr. Tan. And minus sign. OK, let's run that. And it says, hello, Mr. Tan. But if I remove a little minus sign here, look carefully between the space and Mr. and Tan. There's a space there. So the minus sign eats up white space. So tutorial number one, the minus sign at the back eats up white space at the back. The minus sign in the front eats up white space in the front. It's a white space eater. But those people who are Java, JS, JavaScript people, they don't like to see capital letters. Let me uh, blow that up again to be back row friendly. You can see? Good. So let's try replacing this L with a capital S, case sensitive languages, it'll blow up. It should work. No value, Mr. Tan, because it couldn't find capital S. Salute. Let's put it back there. Capital small S. Run that again. Now you have Mr. Tan again. Notice the minus sign on the back. You have one quantity three apples. Where does the tree come from? The tree comes from here. Okay. If I replace this tree and I run it again, we now have run four apples. So far, so good. What if I replace the four with this funny thing over here? What do you think happened? You never seen that? 
You think an error? You think an error? Let me let me give you a hint. Go stringifies all the output. So when you stringify that, when you stringify that, it comes out like that. When you print line that, it shows bracket square bracket one two. But notice this is a map of string to interface, and interface in Go means anything under the sun. I can put in. This is really, really, really okay. Two plus three. I guess everybody will know. Replaces and ex extremifies to five. Let's validate that. Yeah, one. Oops. What did I do? Uh, missing ah, yes. Missing curly. I killed too many. One five apples. So it stringifies. It takes that expression and stringifies it. Now. Here comes the really, really yucky, surprising functional programming part. Those functional programming people I'm sure have no clue as to me. Curly brackets. Let me explain this a little bit. This is a function that takes in a float 32, that returns a float 32. And what that function does is just doubles it. And I put in the value of 2.3. So you should be able to, if you signify it, 2.3 times 2, do the mathematics and you should get, let's validate that, 5, 4.6. Yeah, okay. So that, that is an extremely powerful go term. Do you know about that? Um, no. Actually, I didn't know, I didn't know you could do this like, in line like that. Really. That's, that's, really, that's really, really powerful. It blew my mind when I first saw that. Let's get on with the talk. Okay, so you can have templates, your functions passed in. This is a standard Golang template function, which is basically the printf function, but lowercase p, not the capital P. And it has one argument, two arguments, three arguments. So that's a call with three arguments. I can issue my own function. Here I, I put in my own time function. And that time function is down down here because I say, well, it's, it's over here, return time now. Uh, no, this one. And in this format, and the second time function is, it will be called an offset. My time offset function is this thing over here. So it's blow your mind, simple yet complex. Let me blow it up and talk piece by piece. Okay. What we are passing into the template is a map of string to interface, which means I give my function a name, that's a string, and the interface curly open, curly close means anything under the sun. So my name is Tan, my time is a function which takes no arguments and returns a string. And what that function does is just returns the current time with the formatting. My name is offset, returns integer 2. My name is t offset, returns another funny function, which is a time function that adds a certain duration, which is the offset duration, 2 hours. So let's call it back out. And run this. It says time is 8.34. Yes, right now, almost 9 o'clock. In two hours' time, it will be 10.34. If I change the data in one hour's time, it will be 9.35. So you can do really dynamic, cool stuff with that. And you can call your own functions. You can supply your own functions. Um, it has conditions. Conditional templating. Let's make it back row friendly. So, if this value return returns a positive value one, anything that's not zero or blank. If it returns anything that's not zero or blank, it will execute turning third. If not, it will say go straight. So let's 
let's pull that out and run this. Let's predict what it will show. Uh, let me get that black box out of the way. So if I have a blank, it says going straight. If I have a value, it says turning right, which is the value. If I put in a boolean, which is true, it will say true. If I put in a, goal, if I put in a value of zero, integer zero, it says going straight. So zero and blank is equal to now in template language. Um, if I have struct nil, it won't work. It says going straight. Nil is the same as zero and blank. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if you uh, like, if you have a struct without turn, no. it will not work. It, without the if, I think. Without the if, it won't work. Yes. All right. Let's move on. Um, it's got iterations. Let's make that back row friendly. It's got iterations. So. Uh, the fun stuff starts here. Range. Dollar i, dollar value. These are tempted variables. These are something you define. It's a for loop. For stuff in data, assign it to the index and to the value. That's basically what it means. For the stuff in data. So that's the index, and that's the value. Dot also says the value. Dot and value are the same thing. Uh, and if there's no data to show, say no data. So that's the for loop. Let's execute that. Execute the template. So if I execute that and get that black stuff out of the slides. So I've got four items here. Why four items? A, B, blank is an item. It's not now. It's a, it's a value. Blank and zero are values. D, that's why there are four items. And it says displaying zero, one, two, three because that's the index. And the value is A, B, blank and D. The dot also evaluates to A, B, blank and D. So that's a tutorial on ranges. So far, baby steps, nothing challenging and new. Go has this really, really, really weird thing. Really weird. And I don't know how to use this thing. I don't really know how to use this thing. But it says, here's my range again. Range over something. Range over this thing, which is a queue, which is send ins. So what does send ins do? Send ins makes a channel and it sends five integers once a second. It sends five integers once a second. So if you're doing network programming stuff, this would receive from the network and uh, print out stuff from the network. Cool stuff, but I really do not use it. But let's see it in action. One, two, three, four, five. It exits, it knows how to exit because of this close statement over here. It knows, only knows how to exit because I close the channel. If I don't close the channel, bad things happen. Let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, boom. What does it boom? All go routines are asleep. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. But as I said, this is a really esoteric thing. I look up the docs, I, I really don't know how to use it. But I put it there for completeness. Now let's do the really fun stuff. Template composition, functional guy, Mark can appreciate this. Right, so back row friendly. So I have a template name. I name it just for convenience. You don't need to have names. You can put in a blank string here, but this template is called A. Um, I'm defining template A here. I'm not executing it, I'm defining it. It's a declaration. 
and template A is defined as I and A for A value. And the definition ends with the end statement. Defining template B, you now know what the dashes do. It eats up white space. I and B for B value, and B2, and Here, I'm calling the template. I'm including the template here. So template A, A stuff, template B, B stuff. So here I'm defining templates, here I'm calling templates. When I execute that template, let's see what happens. That's pretty simple. You should expect. I'm A for Apple. Why? Because A, A stuff, A stuff is Apple for A value. And A value is there. And B stuff, B stuff is actually, that's B stuff over there. B value boy and B2 bad. So that's how you use templates. I, I got stuck on this for the longest time. So that's okay. Yeah. Uh, you can use include, but I, I just use the template to execute the template. You can use include, that's a different file. That is on the same file. Okay, how about A and closing B? That's a bit funky here. It gets more funky. Back row friendly, all right. So I'm defining A here. I'm A for A value. I'm still in template A, but I'm executing template B now. So B is inside template A. B is, A is the master, B is the slave. And B is B stuff. And now I define it post definition. I'm B for B value. And I call it once, template A, because there's only one template A. B is included in A. Let's execute that. So, A for Apple is quite clear because A value, A value is Apple. But B stuff is here, which is a map of string to interface, B value. What do I pass into the template? I pass in B stuff, and it works. Um, I don't expect you to digest this code. It's all on GitHub. You can download it. But here is some stuff which I bet Kai doesn't know about. Um, <laughs> because it's so competitive. Alright, let's say we have a form letter. Back row friend here again. Let's say we have a form letter that says uh, I have a body function. It says uh, letterhead. Dear body, sincerely close. It's a form letter. It's a, I don't know what you call it, a uh, junk mail generator. Yeah, it's a junk mail generator. So, what do we do there? Let's look. So I must pass, I can define good news. And good news says, I am pleased to inform you. I can define bad news. We are sorry to inform you your, reject your letter has been rejected or whatever. Yeah, so that's the form letter. And the output can be captured into a buffer. You don't have to write to standard output. You can capture it to a buffer. And this is the interesting part. I can define a body function. I can define a body function that takes nothing but its input and outputs a string and returns the buffer string. So this function basically what it does is it captures some output and sticks it into the body uh, tag if you like. 
So if I execute this, I get good news. Dear whatever, I'm pleased sincerely. If I change this data to bad news and run it again, it says, dear, we are sorry. So I'm taking the good news template and bad news template and sticking it in the layout. Imagine now that this is your HTML with your 5 megabyte JavaScript header and your CSS and whatever in there. HTML header, HTML footer, and stuff you want to insert in between. So that's what this layout function does. I stole this from the book, uh, but I thought it was such a neat thing. I forget the author, I must credit him. It was such a neat thing, I, I, I said I should show it, share with the Go community. So as you have seen in Kai's talk, you can actually have templates in the file system. Template A, I have template A, template B, I have template B, blah blah. Okay. So these, if I have, if I have these files in the file system, it would actually be called template A dot TPL because the name of the file is dot TPL. If I don't want that dot TPL because I'm a neat guy, I don't want to put dot TPL in there. I have to define the name. That's basically what I'm trying to say in the slide. So template A followed by template B, let's execute that. Okay. Okay, before we execute that, let's let's show the code. So the interesting stuff is here. Pass everything under the FS subdirectory. Everything with the .tpl ex uh, extension. So everything in the .tpl extension was what I just showed you just now. Template A and template B. Uh, and when I execute it, you should see the expected result. And as usual, I'm template B, my value is boy, etc. Because I executed as template B. If I change it to template A, It will blow up. Why? Let's see why. I'm asking template A to execute with the map B value. And B value is void. I should actually change it to A value. And when I run it, nothing. If I replace it with the dot, what do you think will happen? Always replace templates with dots. It will blow up. It will blow up because uh, that's what's called them. Is that a dot? Yeah, dot. You'll fail. Yeah, because dot is undefined. You actually have to put in some, some data in there. You, put in, you have to execute it with the map. So you have to execute it with M you get that really weird stuff at the back. The whole map. The whole map. So templates are very rich in code. Very, very, very rich. You can apply all sorts of functional programming tricks. And you can do the same thing with HTML. Exactly the same, I won't go through it. But I will show you the end result. So over here, I have my render template, which is a map of string to interface. My navigation, my main body, my footer. Out renders, uh, HTML with style sheets, everything. My navigation, my main body, my footer. So that's your layout. And if I change the data, my new main body, new main body shows up. 
So all this code is available from Cilian GitHub, GitHub Cilian present Go templates. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Simple tutorial. Interface stringifies any of that is taken. So just stringify that. When you stringify it, zero evaluates the false, blank evaluates the false, nil evaluates the false. Everything else evaluates the true. And, yeah, go ahead. So you say that the template is already out of the field, right? Like C goes and C stops and it's also false. It's, it's a full template language, just like. Jack Hamill, just like ERB. Were you worried that if it's so fast that you put lots of business logic in your view? Uh, don't put business logic in views. But automated context, contextual escaping. I must quote Kai. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me I I actually. Got it. I think I got that from the talk. Uh, but the way I think it's designed, the way that it maps the funk map onto your, onto your template. It's, it's, it's just another function that you find. You do, you, you do generally the right thing. Yeah. You don't put too much crap into the template. Yeah. But let's, let's show contextual whatever, whatever. Let me close this so I can Central. see what I'm doing. Contextual escaping. Script kiddies love this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's an injection attack. So let me put in an injection attack right there. My injection attack. What do you think I have? Uh, text templates will work, but that's text. That's fine. HTML templates. Will it be escape? I'm not sure what it is. It will be escape. See? My ampersand less than script, ampersand greater than. It's escape. It like renders it harmless. No, it does it by default. So it's, it's idiot proof. Go templates are idiot proof unless you say it's HTML. You have to explicit tell you, explicitly yeah, tell it to escape, to not escape. Oh yeah, okay, because it's a variable. Yeah, you have to explicit tell it, explicitly tell it not to escape. Otherwise, it will protect you. It you protects you from wind dumb. Sorry? How do you say? Oh, you, oh, you go HTML. HTML dot HTML. HTML. Capital HTML. Oh, okay. HTML uh, is, is the Go star. HTML is a package. Dot capital HTML is don't escape HTML. Treat it as unescape HTML. So if I say, uh, I, I didn't import HTML, so it won't work. But if I imported it, that it would it would show on the script, it will pop up. Anything. Any other question? Yeah. So simple tutorial. I thought it'd be useful. I share with you guys. Genuinely think there's no better way to template. Please um, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> well, don't say M4. No, no, no. M4 is not nasty. The Ruby templating systems are really nice. But, but it's slow. Fast, but it's slow. But slow. I, I didn't say not. I didn't say fast. I said nice. What does what does Ruby do? Uh, where they go uh, it's, it, it doesn't have this crappy double curly nonsense. It's, it's nice. So it, reads, it, it reads like English. Oh, like until you reboot your machine. It reads like English. I mean, I'm a Ruby guy. I came from the Ruby world and I'm loyal to Ruby, but Go is nice. Go is better. <laughs> <laughs> Go is better. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've moved over to the Go side for a few reasons. Uh, one reason is it doesn't need resources. I, I, I wrote servers in Ruby before. Servers in, in Go, 
you, you can stay up for months and uh, they don't need resources. It's the same thing in the States, like, I did this in the States where I deferred and closed and I had oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. files. Boom! Eat up all the memory in your system. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want people thinking that they can do invulnerable robust code. No, no, no. no, no. So oh. it's, it's like a presentation over today. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's, a, it's a lot more involved. Yes. Which is paid experts. <laughs> like Kai. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the smoking gun. <laughs> Sorry, we oh, had a problem. Uh, oh, uh, what was the details? Oh. Uh, no, it's, it's, I did some funny stuff just now. Okay. Okay. Right, thanks, everyone. Right, see you. Uh, thank you. It's the last uh, minute.